Welcome everyone to our A to J Author new user webinar. This is Jessica Frank. I am A to J Author's project manager. A couple of notices and authoring tips. Um, the first is that our conference, CaliCon, um, A to J Author is a project of Cali, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. We're having a virtual conference this year because of COVID. So if you are interested in attending the CaliCon, it's going to be the first week of June and you can find more information at 2020.calicon.org. Um, the focus is generally on legal education and technology, but um, those in the legal aid space and access to justice space, will um, they'll also be content for you. And so um, feel free to check it out. We'll have our speakers um, list up soon. And if you want to present at the conference, there's still the, that option too. All of that information is available under 2020.calicon.org. Also um, in the news, LSC, um, oh, and also mentioned that CaliCon is free. Um, usually we charge for the in-person conference, but um, we are not charging at all. Um, it's three days. You can attend what you want to attend, different sessions, um, all completely free. So no harm in signing up to check it out. And we have a really cool swag bag if you're interested. Also information on that under um, the CaliCon website. Um, LSC TIG LOIs were pushed back from their March deadline. They are now due May 15th, so that is a week from tomorrow. If you're interested in submitting um, a LOI related to A to J author and you need help, just let me know. And make sure to follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with the latest in A to J author news. Um, I try to tweet out stuff related to code pushes that we're doing, um, any news about A to J author, ways, innovative ways in which legal aids and court are, courts are using A to J author, and anything sort of related to access to justice, technology, or legal tech um, as well. So today's topic is covering um, A to J guided interviews with multiple A to J DAT templates. So the A to J DAT is um, the A to J document assembly tool, and you can automate multiple templates, either text or PDF templates, within a single A to J guided interview. So we'll talk about um, the two different ways in which you can create templates in A to J author. You can start from scratch with a blank text template, and you can add elements to it, or you can start with an existing PDF, a document like a court form, and add fields on top of that to automate it. The end result is going to be the same, though, for the end user. A PDF document is assembled at the end from either starting with a text template or a PDF template. So either way you start, the output for the end user is a PDF, um, but you as the author have the decision on whether you want to start with a text template or a PDF template. First, we're going to cover text templates. So these start off as blank, uh, blank documents, basically, like a Google Doc and you add elements to them to build out your template. So you can have an unlimited number of elements in your template, so it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. There are elements that are universal to your whole text template. These are under the template options. They cover layout, formatting for the entire document, section numbering, and whether a template is conditionally inserted. We'll talk more about what that means in a bit. Then there are elements used to build your template out. So these include sections, page breaks, logic with if else statements, repeat loops, and likely the one you'll use the most, the rich text editor. The rich text element allows you to add text with all of the markup that you want. So bold, underlining, italicizing, supra and superscript, um, indenting, block quotes, um, any formatting you want, like center aligned or left aligned, um, if you want to add numbered list or, pair, or um, bulleted list, links, all of that kind of stuff, including um, whether or not you want to add variables to it. Um, so here's where you're going to add the text, the formatting for your document, and the variables that you want to make up your ultimate document for your end user. This is showing how you, um, when you select the um, variable picker. You can start typing for the variable and it'll pull up a list of all the variables that you have currently in your interview and lets you add um, from that list. So it starts sorting by character as you type. 
um, it pulls ones that match that character, those characters. Another element is the if else conditional. It lets you insert other elements based on some logic statement being either true or false or some variable equaling a set value. So this element lets, lets you wrap other elements in an if else statement. So this is further customizing your template for your end user. Note, something came up related to um, if else statements and having rich text inside of an if else. Um, this week with one of our authors, they were looking to conditionally insert uh, numbered paragraphs. So everybody was getting paragraphs one, two, and three, but only some people got four, and then everybody got, you know, five and six. Um, but they wanted the paragraphs to be numbered one, two, three, four for those that didn't get um, that conditionally inserted one and to be labeled one, two, three, four, five um, if they did get the conditional insert. The current status of the DAT right now is that your numbering, your paragraph numbering, is um, within one element. So having rich text and then a conditional element, um, that conditional element's numbering is not going to follow the numbering um, of the first element. So what their workaround is, is they're deciding to use bullet points um, because then the numbering won't be out of order um, if that conditional template is inserted or that conditional element is inserted. So that's just one of the things that's sort of a future feature for A to J author. Currently, right now, the numbering uh, does not uh, change if an element is conditionally inserted in it. So you just have to account for some of those uh, things when you're authoring. That's why testing is really important when you're uh, working on, on any of this to make sure it looks the way you expect it to look at the end. You can also add repeat loops to display information multiple times based on the end user's needs. So if they need information about their three children in three separate paragraphs, that can be done. Or if the information in a repeat loop needs to be displayed in a list or a table, those are options. It can be displayed um, a set number of times, or it can be displayed based on the counting variable that you use. So if the end user says, they have uh, four children, they go through the loop four times, the counting variable holds a value of four, it can repeat for that counting variable, so it'll repeat the four times end user one needs, um, the two times end user two needs, whatever the end user needs. You can evaluate what they've told you and how many times they've told you about the information and then conditionally insert it based on that. We also have in, um, in terms of the table, you can what's showing here is that you can have it bordered, condensed, striped rows. You can have columns be different percentages. You can have multiple columns by adding, um, clicking that little plus, the green plus circle. Um, and so there's a lot of customization that can go into how you want your ultimate document to look. These are just different options. This is showing the list. This is showing a text block. So if it was a full paragraph instead of a table or a list. Um, okay, so the second way to create a template is to make a PDF template. So this means that you start with an existing PDF and you automate on top of it. For PDF templates, you click the Upload PDF button right here, and your local file explorer is going to open. So from there, you select the PDF that you want to upload, you click Open, and it will, when you select it, A to J author is going to load it into the template editor and you can start editing and automating on top of it. So it shows you what your uh, template is or your, your PDF is. It creates the template for you from that PDF. And now um, you just need to add fields to it and start automating. Adding fields is really simple. We have um, an algorithm behind the scenes that when you double click on any blank line, it tries to figure out um, based on the line itself, how big the field should be. If it's wrong, if it doesn't get it quite right, or it's too high or too short or whatever, you can adjust the field um, once, once it's created. So just double click on any line, it'll create the field. You can also just click and draw, and you can draw a field wherever you want, um, and they're all movable um, once you have the fields up there. You can also duplicate fields. So um, we have some shortcuts that are keyboard shortcuts that are built into um, A to J author. So Control D is going to allow you to duplicate uh, any field you've already created as well. 
Like the text templates, there are universal template options for PDF templates that control the font that allow you to conditionally insert the template and for PDF templates that allow you to re replace the base PDF. So that's the first arrow on the right there. That means that if the underlying court form changes, like the court you're working with, changes the formatting of a paragraph or um, they move the caption around, something like that, you can replace the base PDF, the underlying picture that becomes the template, and just move any of the fields that you've already automated to their new placements. So um, you don't, basically this allows you to update the template based on any court form changes without having to start from scratch again and redo the work of automation that you've already done. So I think that's particularly helpful um, if your court is known to make small adjustments, you don't have to start from scratch again. You can just change that base PDF, move things around a little bit to fit, but all of the, um, the boxes are still there. All of the fields are in place. They all have the correct variables. They're all mapped to an existing question in an interview. All you're doing is sort of um, changing that back picture and making your old template fit the new base PDF. So um, on the screen also is one of the field options um, on the left. When you assign a variable, you can have it be a true false checkbox and you can have different checkbox styles. Um, you can also tell A to J to, to make the check mark the mark if the variable is true or false, depending on what you need um, it to appear like on the form. The PDF template in addition to plain text fields can handle checkboxes and overflow text as well. If your end user's answer is going to be bigger or you assume or, or think it might be bigger than the allotted space in the field, you can decide to append the entire thing to an addendum, just append the overflow so it cuts it off and sends the rest to the overflow um, or to the addendum. Or you can have A to J author truncate the text and ignore any overflow. So those are options you as the author have to decide. Um, generally, authors are gonna send um, overflow to an addendum because you'd hate to cut an end user's text off, um, but it might be something that the space only allows for X amount of characters and that is all the end user gets. With this, you can also um, limit the number of characters an end user can type in in the interview itself. So some of that, you can do some mitigation on the front end to prevent a lot of the overflow that might happen in the back end. The, if you think about it, the end user doesn't know how much space they have on the form. They theoretically haven't seen the form before that they're completing. And so you as the author can build that help into your interview to in order to prevent any text overflow. But if there is, you can decide what to do with it. The A to J DAT PDF can handle multiple page PDFs too. So you're not limited to a single page document to use as your base PDF layer. You can um, have as many pages as you need as, as the court form requires for your, um, your PDF template. The DAT options we just discussed can be combined in multiple ways. So these, the DAT options, both the text template, the PDF template, multiple of either or a combination of them, these can all be combined in multiple ways to build your complete document assembly package within a single A to J guide interview. So templates live within an interview. Um, templates themselves cannot live independently of an interview. Um, so the interview, the A to J guide interview is the host, um, is the, the, the main um, container, and the templates live within it. But you can have multiple templates within a single A to J guide interview. So this allows you to create a customized experience for your end user without having to maintain multiple interviews or um, sending your end user to different interviews. You don't have to do that sort of screening as to who's appropriate for what and if this is the correct interview for them. Um, once they get into say the divorce interview, everybody who wants to get a divorce in X state can do it because you have um, different questions for people who have children uh, or have property or whatever. We're gonna do alimony and then you have the different templates associated and conditionally inserted based on their answers. So I mentioned this when we were talking about the universal template options for both text and PDF templates, but to make certain templates conditionally inserted, you check the little box next to the word conditional logic, and then you set the condition by which this template is going to get assembled. If it can, um, so the condition 
can be if a variable value is true or false, if it equals a certain value, if it does not equal a certain value, or if it's greater than or less than some value. So there are options on how you can conditionally insert it, and we hope we sort of covered all the scenarios. If there for some reason is a scenario that's not covered by these conditional logics that you want to um, have in the A to J dat, reach out to me. We're always open for suggestions from our authors. You all are the ones who are using the interviews the most um, and who are, are, are working with it in real life. And so we are always open for any um, bugs you find. Feel free to reach out to me or any new features that you're interested in. Can't promise we'll get to them right away, but it goes into an issue queue. We try and get funding to do certain um, enhancements and bug fixes. And when that comes through, we work through, through the issue queue. So to practice what you've learned today, you can go to our sample exercise page. It's under the learn tab at the top of a to j author.org. And then um, if you hover over learn, you'll have the option to go to sample exercises, or you can follow um, the link here. And you can try your hand at automating an A to J guide interview with multiple templates. If you don't actually have a project to work on right now, I find it's best to use the sample exercises and there's more than a dozen of them under that sample exercise page. This is just one of them to really hammer in sort of what you've learned by attending this webinar or to start working on A to J. Um, I'm sort of a learn by doing person. And so it helps me to have something to work on once I learn a new um, a new topic or a new um, something to, to work to do an A to J author um, to have something to work on. And so um, I created these sample exercises to hopefully help all of you. They're all just completely made up. Some of them are real court forms that I have uh, altered to be in the land or the state of A to J author, like this one. Um, some of them are just really simple, basic ones. And there's al always um, time estimates in the description of the sample exercise on how long I think it should take you. So you have an idea of what you're getting into before you get started. Okay, so uh, before I go to questions, our next webinar is June 11th. It's not the first Thursday of June because we have our Cali conference. Uh, that week, and so we're doing it the second week of June, so it's June 11th, the second Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Um, I do note on the Cali Conference, so the Cali Conference is free. The swag bag is not free. It's $24 if you want the really cool Cali swag. Um, and then let me check the questions. If you have any questions, feel free to put them into uh, the chat or the question box, and I'll take a look at them. I'm seeing... Um, one question is, can you now attach a form template, a PDF, to a text Word template? So you can have both a PDF template, yes, and a text template in a single A to J guide interview. So the um, this is only those created in A to J author, not if you've done a form template in Hot Docs and a Hot Docs Word template. Um, so I'm not sure, if Steve, if you want to if you're speaking specifically about the DAT or if it's any uh, templates. So only within the DAT, you can have both a PDF template and a text template um, in the same interview, but the text template is not word-based. It's not like Hot Docs where there's an overlay to the Word toolbar. It's all created from scratch, more like a Google Doc um, internally to A to J author. Are there any other questions? Yeah, okay, so related to Hot Docs. Um, I'm not sure, related to Hot Docs, whether you could have a PDF and a text template in the same uh, output. Um, the team at LHI would be best for answering that question. Sorry. Um, okay, so if you all have questions or you're working on projects and you get stuck or you have um, new things you want in A to J or bug fixes you bugs you find in A to J author, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Again, LOIs are due a week from Friday. So um, with this extra time, maybe you can get in a project that, you're, um, that you've been putting off. Happy to help with it. I've been doing, um, working with partners on LOIs for almost a decade now. So I have a bunch of samples and other projects we've worked with um, or worked on to complete. So I'm happy to share any of those resources as well. So thank you all for attending and um, we will see you on June 11th. Have a good day.